us to enter into life that is full of glory. God has sent Jesus to show us the way. You must know him in your heart as well as in your head. We invite the Christ into our hearts to lead us to life. Let's remain standing. Our first hymn is number 480. Only trust him. Uh, 
for this post tax surgery, uh, we announced last week that the dates uh, for that were actually this week, and so keep Danny and Helen in your prayers. Sure, yeah, I'd like to tell everybody to recognize Miss Audrey Schweitzer. She's with us today, the first time in a long time. <laughs> It's good to have you back. Then let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, as we come in your house of worship, we come with lots of things on our hearts and minds this day. We come as people that are both lighthearted, but people with concerns in the ways of the world that are upon us. But we come because we serve you, God. We come because you first loved us and sent us your Son, Jesus Christ. We come because you've made humankind in your image. And as we're gathered in this house of worship today, we thank you for your presence and the fact that you are with us here and now. And we ask that you be with those that we have lifted up today. We lift up to you joys that we share. We lift up to you concerns, prayers for healing, prayers for comfort. And we know that you are a God that is about comfort and support and a God that loves each one of us. And we reflect on that love. And we ask this morning, that you will help us to become better versions of ourselves, O oh God. For we are imperfect people. We are people who don't always make the right choices. We are people who are in desperate need of a Savior. And we live in a world that is in the desperate need of a Savior. And we thank you for providing that with your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be more thankful of the blessings that you have provided. Help us to be more appreciative of what we have and to focus more upon serving you as best as we are able. There are many times, oh God, that we need to rely on your strength. And as we sit in the calm of this worship service, in the beauty of your house, it is a wonderful reminder that you are with us, O oh God. Help us to continue to focus on serving one another and being the people that you really called us to be. And now we pray as Christ Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
That's somebody who stands on the sidelines that encourages you when you're kind of scared to do something. So today you're going to Miss Carla's house and she's having like a swimming pool party for anybody who wants to come and go swimming. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about Miss Laura. Uh, I know some of you take swimming lessons at Miss Carla's house, and Miss Raylinda is your swimming coach. Well, she had a sister named Teresa, and me and Teresa went to school together. So I invited Miss Raylinda, and she also teaches at Betty Ross Park. Well, Miss Laura, years ago, I went to Betty Ross Park and took swimming lessons, and I was about eight or nine. My mom and daddy were putting a pool in their house and they thought that I needed to go for swimming lessons. So I went to Betty Ross Park for swimming lessons and it was like a week long swimming lesson. They taught you how to swim underwater, swim above water, lay on your back and float. But at the end of the week, they had a big high dive. And they said, who wants to jump off the high dive? Well, sitting on the ground looking up at the high dive, I thought, oh, I can do that. I don't look that high. <laughs> well, so of course me was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I get up on the high dive and I look down. Oh my gosh. Those people that I was standing right beside of, they looked very tiny down there. And that water looked way far away. And I looked at my instructor. And he said, go ahead. And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> and he said, you're either going to jump or I'm going to throw you off. Because <laughs> it's very not safe to go back down the ladder. And I looked down and I said, uh-uh. <laughs> so do you think this Laura jumped or do you think they threw her off? Miss Laura got thrown off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh uh, I am not jumping off in here. So he said, okay, I'm going to throw you off. So he did. But down below, before I got thrown off, those people who were standing down there was encouraging me. They was like, come on, you can jump. Of course they was encouraging me because they were the smart ones down there who didn't want to jump. <laughs> and he said, you can do this, you can jump off there. I have faith in you. And if you can't take the lead, I'm going to throw you off. And I know you can swim to the side. And so he did. He threw me off. And I went jump in the water. And I swam to the side. And it was the coolest thing ever. Because he knew from watching me swim all week. He knew I could do it. He knew I could swim to the side. And I thought it was amazing. I was so proud of myself from jumping. So today, when you go to this cart, I don't suggest you throw anybody in the pool. But I do suggest, if you see somebody's a little scared of jumping in, maybe you can hold their hand. Maybe you can say, I, go ahead, Wes.
Brothers and sisters who are God's people, join me now as we confess our sins before Almighty God. We confess to you, O oh God, and before one another that we have sinned. We have claimed to be your people with our hands, but our hearts betray us to the truth that we have centered our lives on things other than you. We have filled our times and our hearts with greed, retaliation, and anger, and have not allowed Jesus to purchase us our sins. Forgive us and empower us with your spirit to open our hearts to the cleansing fire of our Savior, that we may truly be your children. Amen. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ promised in the gospel to all who repent and believe. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, that the wicked turn from their ways and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen.
today comes from Colossians, the sixth chapter, or no, the second chapter, the sixth through the fifteenth verses. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow, deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the elementary spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, which you were also raised with him through your faith and working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were the dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us, condemned us, and has taken away the nail to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Sanctify through your words, your words of truth, O Lord. Let us join together and confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only God, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the cross of Solomon, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us with many good and wonderful gifts, let us return a portion of those gifts to Almighty God.
We offer before you now these gifts of our tithes and offerings. Use these gifts. Multiply them for the upbuilding of this church and for your kingdom upon this earth. Help those who are in need and strengthen these gifts for your glory. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke's gospel, the 11th chapter, the 1st through the 13th verses. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine has come on a journey and has come to me, and I know food to offer him. <clears throat> and suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. And I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who finds and will be the one who knocks. The door will be open. Which of you who is a father, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Word of God for the people of God you may be seated.
Scripture, his own prayer. And the title today is Asking the Question of How Is Your Prayer Life? And I think that that's going to be kind of the theme through this whole message today. Um, a few weeks ago, I was working in my little tool room at the parsonage. And of the entire parsonage, which is a lovely house, uh, the tool room is my favorite room. And in fact, it's the one room in the house that I truly call my own uh, place. I fixed it exactly to my specifications, and it is the one room in the house that belongs to me. I was out there, and like the weather, it was just incredibly hot, and I was sweating and organizing and things, and Abby and I were talking a little bit later, and I said, the one thing I'm missing from this summer is this is the uh, only summer except for COVID that I haven't done a missions trip in a number of years. And I was really missing that. And that was something that was on my mind that day. And then a few days later, I got a text from a friend of mine who works for this company that does the missions trip saying that they were short of a staff person. Now there's a few things of this that is somewhat uh, remarkable because I first started going on these trips in 02 and I had taken three different youth groups on these trips. And of all the people that have gone, there's only been two that were not really that interested. And this young lady was one who went and didn't really like it that way. A few years passed and I encouraged her to maybe go again, and she did. And then now she's worked two summers for the company in Colorado. And I think that that's just one of the ways that the Lord works in mysterious ways. And has plans for us. But this text is about asking things of God. First of all, the disciples asked him, how should we pray? And the text we're given is the Lord's Prayer. Now, it might vary a few words based on how we say it at this particular church. But it gives the disciples this motto of how to pray in which we should first start off by praising God. You say, hallowed be thy name. We're saying that your name, O God, is holy. And then we're asking God for our daily bread, our daily substance. And then we are asking for forgiveness and to be kept from temptation. This gives us a model in which if we pray this way, it covers the basics in which we are praising God. We are asking things of God. And we are hoping to receive these very things. But this scripture is an important reminder that when people ask for things in the right manner from the Father, that He will give the right things in return. This doesn't promise us answers that we may be asked of every question. However, God answers all of our prayers, just what may be in the way that we would ask. And this is such an important thing because it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find Knock and the door will be opened to us. These are words of Christ that is promising the Holy Spirit to us if we remain faithful to Him. So I got the text that day. It was a text. And she said in it, I know you're probably busy, but is there any way that you can help and be an adult chaperone, which is called a red shirt side coach, this particular week. And this was only a week and a half ago. And I said, well, I'll have to check. I have to go through some channels, but I will see what I can do. 
And it's amazing how things fell into place when they were for the right person because this is something that I wanted to do for a long time. And while I volunteered before, I've never done this particular role, which is called a site coach. And my responsibility next week will be to go to the different job sites and to see how projects are being handled, to make sure they're progressing and to help if people are having issues or problems. You know, one of the things that sort of scares me this week is that I'm going to have to troubleshoot to people and I'm going to have to help with construction things and help advise people. And it's something that I know just a little bit about. Maybe just enough to be dangerous. Yeah. I'm not the, you know. <coughs> See, I'm used to people calling me for things like uh, prayer. <laughs> not to help them fix uh, a household need or room room for your house or something. Like that. But the Lord provides when we ask it. And I think that that is what is so important that we need to ask of ourselves is how is our prayer life? And specifically, um, are we being spiritually fulfilled right now? Because if we are feeling like there is a hole within us, Maybe we need to make sure that Christ has plenty of room in our hearts and minds. This text from Colossians reminds us that Christ is the fullness of the promise of God. You know, we want fullness. This week we had a... Um, what the highlight of this week was the uh, Young at Hearts trip to the mountains. And we ate lunch um, at Daniel Boone Inn, and um, it was all you could eat. And I ate beyond the point of reason this week. <laughs> I don't normally eat like that, but the food was so good, and I left there incredibly full. But you know the bad thing about eating a big meal like that? And I was full for a while. We, uh, we had a meeting and I just that night just ate a few crackers for supper. But the next day, I woke up just as hungry in the morning as if I had eaten only something very little. Because no matter how much we eat, we always hunger again. And it's the same way with uh, thirst. You know, I've had days where I've been outside a lot and I have drank and drank and drank and never felt like that thirst could be quenched. And no matter how much you drink, you'll always be thirsty again. However, that is what is so important with Christ is that we have a fullness in Christ that spiritually fills us to the point of brimming over and keeps us sustained. It is the sustainability because there are many things out there that makes us happy, that makes us feel fulfilled, that gives us joy. But those kind of joys only last so long. You know, I like it when I get into a good TV show. You know, there's a show, different one that I like. And what I love about streaming is I find something I like, and then each evening we'll watch this show in bed. And I take so much pleasure from watching a good uh, show or a good movie. However, no matter how good it is, don't we quickly start to forget the details? Don't we forget of what it was that we went to watch? It's amazing how something that we enjoy so much in the moment will fade away like that. Because these are all temporal things. And if we have that fullness in Christ, then that will help us to be firm. While I was excited, 
at the opportunity and how everything started falling into place. By the end of last week, once all the pieces fell together and I realized it was actually going to happen, then it occurred to me that I'm going on a trip this week and I haven't done the first thing to prepare for it. And the thing is, while I have a lot of these trips under my belt, so to speak, I also plan them months and even a year in advance where I'm constantly working on some sort of small detail to get ready for that moment. And suddenly I realized that I had less than a week to get ready for that moment. But it came together well for me. And I appreciate the support this week of this church and your patience when I'll be out of the office. But the thing is, we need to focus on God and what God wants for us as his people. Because the God that we serve is not a God of I can't. It's not a God of it's too hard. Not a God of quitting. Because we live in an age and time in which the church has less of a role in the lives of people than it once did. But are we praying about that? Are we asking God's help to reach more people? Are we asking for the Spirit of God to dwell in our hearts and minds and on our church that we might reach others for the kingdom of Almighty God? Because these today are the words of Christ. And it says that there are many prophets and kings that wanted to see what the disciples did but did not see it. They wanted to hear it and did not hear it. And we must acknowledge that God is with us and the good gifts that come from Almighty God. Because we cannot expect doors to be open to us if we're not willing to knock. We cannot expect to receive if we have never asked to begin with. It gives a great example of how if you came to one of your neighbors or one of your neighbors came to you late, someone shows up at the doorstep, there is nothing in the house. And yet because of the persistence we would do what was asked of us and help to provide The thing is, God stands ready. He sent us His Son, Jesus Christ. And He stands ready to assist us, to strengthen us, to help us grow. All we have to do is ask. And to come full circle in today's sermon, how is your prayer life today? And what are you asking for? And it's not simply about asking, it's also about praising God, of calling on the name of God and acknowledging that it is holy, that the name of God created the heavens and earth and all that in them and all that we experience. And to thank God for our blessings. Maybe we don't feel blessed this day. Maybe we feel like we have too much stress or concerns or things on our hearts and minds. But yet if we take a step back and we think, what are the good things that we in fact have? You know, because this tells us that Jesus Christ paid for all of our sins. One of the things that I don't like about being an adult <coughs> is when you're a young person, you never get bills. And then one of the things that I found very consistent, like if you're questioning this morning, are you an adult or not? 
Ask yourself, do you get bills? <laughs> That's a great answer to that question. And without fail, there are some bills that arrive at my house every month that I have to pay whether I want to or not. And some things like taxes, internet, never actually end. There are those blessed things like car payments that at some point or another will end, at least for a while. But some bills will go on as long as we're on this earth. It never gets paid off. Yet, we accumulate debts each and every day with our sins. Ways that we've fallen short of God's glory. Ways that we've not acted maybe as Christian as we should. And the great and wonderful thing about following God is all of those debts are paid. They're wiped clean. They no longer exist. There is no hold upon us. And see, the thing is, I truly don't have to pay that car payment. But the bank can truly repossess my car as well. <laughs> However, with Christ, there is no power that can repossess our souls when they are with Him. There's nothing on this earth that can take away that joy that we experience with Christ. And I know everyone who is here is in a different place in life, but we all need Christ. And I ask you to think this week about your own prayer life. And I ask you for this week to keep me in your prayers. And keep the church in your prayers. That we can continue to serve God and make his ministry known upon this earth through Christ with the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these words of Scripture. We thank you for the comfort that they bring to us and the fact that they challenge us. Help us that we might serve you as best as we're able. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs> At this time, let us stand for our final hymn number 630, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.